Hello again from PR Presents, where today I'm visiting the Herbert Art Gallery and Museum here in Coventry. To the outside of looking in, the name Coventry is likely to make you think of Lady Godiva, the specials, a famous cathedral ruin, that phrase about being sent here, and of course, Jimmy Hill. In just over two years' time, Coventry will celebrate being the UK City of Culture, and I'm pleased to be joined today by Caroline from the Tourist Information Centre to elaborate more on this multi-dimensional Midland city. Good morning, Caroline. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning. We'll start off then with visitors. Um, I'm guessing that a number of people would come along and uh, perceive the medieval times to be the most synonymous with Coventry's history, although I gather it goes back even further. Oh, indeed, yes, we go back a long, long way. Um, where our first cathedral stood, uh, which was destroyed by Henry VIII. Um, before that, it was the nunnery of St Osburgh's, and that was actually sacked by the Vikings. So we've had visitors and settlements here, religious orders, for a very long time. Going back a long time indeed, yes. Well, on to the story then about uh, Lady Godiva. I mean, you've got the statue of her that stands pride of place in the middle of Broadgate. But what exactly is it that makes um, Lady Godiva um, so, you know, much of a big part of Coventry's history? Well, we've always had processions for Godivers over the uh, centuries. Um, so, and obviously there's the famous uh, legend of her doing her ride through the streets uh, naked. Naked in them days would be, mean probably a totally different thing, as in she'd be <laughs> stripped of a station. So, but you wouldn't want to look at a boring statue of a lady in ordinary clothing. So they, they took it literally at the word meaning naked. But it was a ride to help the people. She felt they were being taxed and overly taxed. Right. Um, so basically between her and her husband, he says, right, if you're willing to do that, Fine, okay, I'll drop the taxes, uh, which he did. And actually, um, if you look back in the records, going up to um, one of the Henrys, I think probably Henry III, the tax was abolished until about then, and the only tax that was levied on the people were those who had horses. Oh, right, so okay. th there is actually proof that a tax was dropped, and it, then it was just added on for those who had horses. So right, right. there's quite rather a bit than, of truth to it. Yeah, yeah, rather than just obviously a legend itself. Yep, yeah, that's it, yeah. definitely. Wonderful. OK, well, I mean, in terms of the football team, everyone knows that Coventry City wear sky blue and mm -hmm. obviously the elephant badge taken from the city's coat of arms. Mm -hmm. Although, as I understand, the actual colours on the coat of arms are red and green. Mm -hmm. What do they symbolise? Um, it's always been our chosen colours. Um, when you go back to the original coat of arms, uh, there'd be the elephant and then there'd be the part underneath, like the shield with the red and green. Um, so that they are very vivid colours. Um, also, the city would have been split into two. We have a, a great big church out there, which is our second cathedral, that's St Michael's. That belonged to the earls. Um, so there were no particular denomination. They were just the earls, very rich. So if you lived in sort of that area of the city, you would go to their church and you would pay your money to that church. On the other side, you've got Holy Trinity, which originally was the prize church, which belonged to the first cathedral. And if you lived in that part of the city, you would go to that church and pay your money there. And a lot of people seem to think sort of the green would represent the prior's half and the red would represent the old, with the very rich red colour. And if you look at our guildsmen as well, and the guildsmen put a lot of money into the guild hall and the church of St Michael's, and they wear the vivid red gowns. Right, OK. So there's obviously definitely some connection there between the two. Yes. Well, you mentioned then about the cathedral. I mean, on a very sad note, of course, the date, uh, the 14th of November, 1940, mm -hmm. Needs no introduction to Coventrians, with um, St Michael's Cathedral being at the heart of all the devastation. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that by the end of the Blitz, Coventry was, was one of, if not the most decimated British city per population. Um, but with such an unenviable rebuild task ahead, what were the key factors in, in not only getting Coventry back on its feet again, but actually creating a boom city by the 1960s? Yes, it was very much an architect's dream, because as you can imagine, it was like, oh, wow. Mm, so mm. we had our first shopping precinct. We were an example for that. Coventry's been a lot of firsts for things as well. And we've always been very good to bounce back and um, start doing things. So obviously, we've had watch industry. There was a lot of people that came here then, because by then, the motor industry was taken off. This was the way forward. Still a lot of people going around on bicycles. And of course, we had James Starley here, who designed the bicycle and is the founder of the bicycle and his nephew designed the one that we see nowadays. So the bicycle very much the first industry here um, of transport and then you go on to the cars. And I remember my great uncle, he worked at the Humber, but I mean, they all come out on bicycles. I mean, as much as we were making them and selling them, um, still a lot of people couldn't afford them. But mm, um, mm. now, yes, and it, you go down to our transport museum, which is one of the best in Europe. 
Um, you can see all the cars that have been produced through Coventry through the years. And now it's coming back again now with design, more technology on driverless cars, electronic cars. So we're, we're there again for the first for the future. Wonderful. I mean, you mentioned about the, the amount of people here that came along to help out with the rebuild task and obviously have created a, a, a multicultural city which Coventry prides itself on. And uh, I'm imagining very much echoed in the music scene in the city. Yes, um, two-tone music was started up here. Probably through a dark period, not just here, it was um, sort of all over England with a bit of depression, strikes and things like that. Um, so the two-tone um, music started up, um, speaks for itself, two-tone, black and white together. Um, and it stuck um, whenever you go anywhere in England. I've been on various places on my holidays and you hear that two-tone music come up. People go, oh yeah, that's, that's the Coventry music, that's the specials, Coventry band. And then there was a lot of other bands after that, you know, so you got the beat and you got all sorts that followed on. Um, and it's still very much to the heart of people now. Um, Neville Staple, he's got his band and he's recently been at the Godiva Festival and it really draws the crowds. Yeah, yeah, very such a, a big part of the city as well. Well, I mean, no street uh, surely typifies medieval history more so than, than Spon Street uh, in Coventry. But um, I understand this is thanks to a cut and paste project from not that long ago. Yes, it was thought about in sort of from the beginning of the 1960s, they were thinking about moving several of these medieval buildings. Spon Street was one of the main thoroughthroughs that went um, on to Birmingham. Um, so you'd be coming sort of Oxford, and it was just the main through. So when the design of the ring road came, mm. it sort of cut that street in half. So oh, there was right. a lot of original buildings left there. So the council decided to bring up a conservation project and move other buildings. So when you look down there, some of the buildings are a bit odd. They're two or three stories high. Mm. They're not mm. original. So they all have plaques on them to tell you whereabouts they were moved from. So dotted around the city, there was quite a lot of medieval buildings uh, left. So they decided to form a whole street of medieval buildings. Oh, right, OK, yeah. I mean, you can definitely tell that now about the different heights, now I think of it, but it, we have to look at the plaques at some point. Well, um, we were talking earlier on then about uh, the, the motor industry in Coventry and bicycle manufacturing as well. Uh, obviously, really, really huge over the past, say, 200 years. Uh, well, when it comes to the actual 2021, the UK City of Culture coming here, what developments will actually reflect this? Um, well, as I say, Coventry always likes to be first at everything. Um, we were sort of landlocked city, um, so we were the fourth richest city in medieval times, um, so which is quite unusual because everyone, it was always ports where mm. they could get mm. to. So weaving and dyeing. So everything's going to be reflected in 2021, our city of culture, our diversity. Um, the, the, we have two great universities here. We have Warwick University and Coventry University, both growing equally. I think they'll basically join in the end and um, we have such a grand mixture of buildings here as well so mm. we've obviously we've got our medieval buildings we've got a medieval cellar just down here as well so we're going to open up lots of things we've got this wonderful display from Imagineer here and uh, they brought about the um, huge Lady Godiva um, which was for the cultural part of the Olympics and she comes out every now and again for special events and it's the build-up to it as well um, which is exciting because all these groups are coming together and producing things. So there's lots of different things building up to 2021 as well. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's a very, very exciting time indeed in the next uh, few years ahead. Well, we'll finish today then with uh, we're talking about another thing. Um, what do you think about towns and cities across the world? They're often, you know, born by the side of a river. But when you wander through the city centre here, it doesn't appear like there is one. Or is there? Ah, well, this is one of our hidden secrets. Coventry's got a lot of uh, hidden gems. And one of them is um, a river. You're quite right. Um, for settlements here, um, Coventry was started really from about eight or nine different religious settlements. And they wouldn't come anywhere unless there was actually running water. And we have the River Sherborne, which runs underneath the city. It's been culverted in parts, obviously, so right. water doesn't do damage to buildings and also... Um, as you know, it, it rots things and it, it mm -hmm. seeps through and gets through eventually. Um, so, yes, yeah, so Paul Meadow, it's called Paul Meadow because there was a pool there from it. The highest point of the city is where the cathedrals are. And monks also used to like to tunnel and bury under and make undercrofts as well. So, yes, and also it helps with the uh, weaving and the dyeing in industry. Um, and our river at one point with the dye being swilled out and that ran that colour of blue. So this right, is where we got our so true blue for Coventry. Ah, OK, right. Mm. The sky blue. The sky blue, yes. <laughs> and it was a steadfast blue um, developed in the medieval times, and it was most sought after because it didn't run. They did other colours as well, black being one of them, 
and we did a lot of trade with people for thinking back then flags and things like that but yes it was certainly one of the best colours and we were most sought after for this um, industry that we had then. And all that really down to River Sherborne. So River Sherborne there. Yeah. Well, maybe then it could be one of the legacies of uh, 2021, maybe some further excavation works, perhaps. Well, we have got uh, the Charter House, which is just 11 minutes walk from the city centre, um, going down the London Road. And there are plans, I know, to widen the Sherbourne there, um, so it's more accessible. And they're going to um, do a new country walk that will lead from the Charter House, which is set in 70 acres of beautiful land, and walking through back to the, following the route, back to the city centre. So there's lots of really fantastic, exciting plans for the city. That will be absolutely brilliant when they do that. Really looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, Caroline, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you today and finding out more about uh, your home city here. And well, I mean, certainly Coventry really should be on the same bucket list for tourists as the Yorks, the Baths, the Lincolns of this country. And in many ways, I would actually say that the, the Phoenix rising from the Second World War ashes offers yet another tourist attraction here. to so the city's long and vast history well, thank you for watching PR Presents, and until next time, well, for myself and Caroline, here's to 2021 in Coventry.